Without further ado, everybody, bring it to this stage, to this microphone. This brother is very active in the community. Even more so, he is very active in the African culture. An active member of the FTP movement and the host of the Nappy Tongue Grassroots Poetry held here every Monday. You know, without further ado, put your hands together. Start, put your hands together. We can we can go up there, but without further ado, bring him to this stage, to this microphone. We know him as Siddiqui Bakari, everybody. What's up, Paul Jazz House? Y'all give it up for yourselves. Yeah. We're going to talk about hip hop tonight. How y'all feel about hip hop? Yeah? What's up? Yeah, we're going to get down and dirty with it, though. Hip-hop did not start in the Bronx. You hear me? Hip-hop did not start in the Bronx. Hip-hop is something that's very ancient. The term might be new. Come on. The term might have began in the Bronx, but we know that hip-hop go way back. We can't talk about hip-hop and not talk about the black arts movement, right? Black nationalism, black power movement. How do you have hip-hop if you don't have the Watts Prophets, the Last Poets, Amiri Baraka, right? Right? Sonia Sanchez, right? right? How do you have hip hop if you don't have the Harlem Renaissance, right? right. Black arts movement recognized that they had the Harlem Renaissance to stand on their shoulders. Right? right? So when we talk about hip hop, let's recognize that this is something that's old. This is something that's been a way of life for us as Africans. We take this thing all the way back to the Nile Valley. See, when we talk about hip hop, we got to talk about the first person to even utter a thought. The first people to utter words. The first people to put anything together that was critical and analytical. In order to do that, we got to go back. We got to go back to ancient times. If you want to talk about, we call this uh, graffiti today, right? Where they spray, spray paint on walls or whatnot, but it can be erased. I'm talking about metal netter. Hieroglyphics as the Europeans call them, right? We can go back there where you see it carved in stone, two, three, four feet deep in stone, and it still exists thousands and thousands and thousands of years later. That is hip hop. That's hip hop on a spiritual level, on a metaphysical level. When we talk about hip hop, we gotta talk about the drum. What's the drum? The drum is a manifestation of your heartbeat. That drum is in rhythm and in sequence with your heartbeat. So now we're talking about chakras, we're talking about kundalini energy, we're talking about third eye, we're talking about what's beyond in the physical but what happens what happens is when a foreign entity comes and enslaves your spirit enslaves your heartbeat enslaves your soul your chakra your kundalini energy when that possessing of spirit comes in what you have is something that's on the physical level so now what do we have we have BET right we got global white supremacy you can't deal with hip-hop and not deal with global white supremacy what's teaching our babies today BET yeah. Yeah. Hip-hop, right? That's what's teaching our babies. It's not teaching them anything spiritual. It's not teaching them anything on a whole other level outside of the physical. So this is what I'm talking about when we talk about hip-hop, global white supremacy, economics. Who's dealing with it? Who owns hip-hop? Huh? Who owns it? Your role. It's not us, right? Entertainment is self-explanatory. Hip-hop is part of entertainment. I don't need to deal with that, right? Right. Let's deal with education. As I mentioned, what is it doing? It's educating our babies to be something that we're not. It's a social rearing. It's a rearing when our sisters look at themselves in a dehumanizing way, and that's what our babies learn at two years old. They're dropping it at two. Can't say a sentence. This is what's going on in our community. We can deal with labor. Who's the labor force in hip-hop? Rappers, right? Yeah. DJs, the dancers, and every other aspect of hip-hop, basically those who are the employees is the labor force. The employers are the ones that run the economic aspect of it. And it's not us. Law. We can deal with law. Who writing all the contracts? The majority of the contracts are written by people that look like us. It's written by who? Those shysty, cunning, Fake ass Jews. Yeah. Let's deal with the true essence of what's happening. This is what we got to deal with. It's a religious aspect too. Because you got almost every rapper on the video with a cross around their neck and don't know what the cross represents, right? Yeah. So now we got a European symbolism and imagery of what the cross is. Not recognizing that the cross actually means peace. It doesn't mean death. 
It doesn't mean crucifixion. The cross means peace. The cross means the four equilateral planes, east, west, north, and south. The cross also means earth, air, water, and fire, the elements. This is spiritual. This is cosmological. Until we go back to who we are, we won't recognize this, and we'll keep being demonized by global white supremacy, demonized by psychopathic racists who control hip-hop. I'm saying this for a reason. I'm saying this because this is no longer our culture. Hip-hop is no longer our culture. Hip-hop has become, I'm going to tell you what it's become. It's become a bitch and a hoe for American psychopathic behavior and culture. Because the first thing they do is they blame hip-hop for what? They blame hip-hop for everything that's going on in the community. Somebody go out and kill somebody, they blame it Tupac, a Tupac rap. As if killing didn't exist before so-called hip-hop. Come on. As if racism didn't exist, as if poverty didn't exist, as if all these aspects of inhumanity and insanity didn't already exist. We got to deal with this shit. Sex, the dehumanization, well, the flat out feminization of the male. We got brothers walking around in pink shirts. <laughs> feminization. Let's make this clear. They're trying to, their best to take away the black manhood and to take away that warrior shit and to take away that God and that goddess. We already dealt with what they do to the women in the videos, what they do to the women in hip-hop in general. We got to recognize that I know it's a lot of different aspects of hip-hop, but we can easily, easily put that under the construct of global white supremacy because we don't own any of it anymore. So we got to recognize that. We got to recognize what we have become because we've allowed foreign entities. We've allowed a social rearing. We've allowed this type of conformity. But we think hip hop is ours. But we don't control anything. And this is not to disrespect anyone who is part of hip hop. I, I know hip hop from being on the street corner, on cardboards, before corporate America got involved with it. That shit is hip hop. I know hip hop when it was just about being on the street corner and rhyming. That's yeah. hip hop. I know hip hop in regards to fashion. That's hip hop before corporate sponsorship got involved. I know what real hip hop is. That's real hip hop. Hip hop that comes from your heart and your soul and your spirit. And you're not tripping off a of rhyming on 16 bars because you already know that everything is in sync with your heart energy. Everything is in sync with your chakras and your karma and so on and so forth. That shit is hip hop and you can't put a price on hip hop. Right. Right. You can't put a price on it. Yeah. We got to get back to that. We got to get back to our true essence before everybody and their mama start telling us what hip hop is. Before the Asians start telling us what hip hop is. Before the white boys start telling us what hip hop is. Before everybody start writing their books, which they already are, about what hip hop is, when hip hop began. But they not include you. They not talking to you about Kimmy. They not talking to you about Ta-Nehisi. They not talking to you about Nothing in the Nile Valley, as if it didn't exist. They're not talking to you about the dances. All of the dances that most definitely is African dances that have to do with spiritual concepts, spiritual principles, cosmology, had to do with uh, agriculture, vegetation, things of that nature, paying homage to what allowed you to continue to live. That's hip hop. That's why we dying today. Because we allowed a foreign entity to come in and give us hip hop and tell us what it is. And now we barely surviving. We barely breathing as slaves. Hotel.